think about this. Think about this for a moment. We now live in a country, the year 2024, where dudes beat up women in sports regularly. That's, this is something that happens regularly. And it shouldn't laugh because it's not funny. That one MMA chick got her skull beaten in. High school volleyball girl still has concussion problems. Some dude spiked a ball off of her face. This happens in front of our eyes regularly. And not only is there no outrage about it, everyone's just kind of moved on. I mean, the mainstream people, I know you're mad about it. President put out a statement yesterday. Women in sports continue to push new boundaries that inspire us all. But right now we're seeing that even if you're the best, Women are not paid their fair share. It's time we give our daughters the same opportunities as our sons and ensure women are paid what they deserve. Joining me now, Jennifer Gilardi, culture, health, and policy writer. Jennifer, president is very, very concerned about women, especially in sports, getting equal treatment, isn't he? Uh, yeah, well, if he was, then he'd you know say something about the men and women's sports, but he doesn't. He celebrates the day of transgender visibility on a very sacred holy day for many of us. So um, they don't seem to be too concerned with equality. They are, they have a different, different definition of it to be sure. Jennifer, doesn't it seem like I only have my perspective as a dude, but as a woman, (laughs) does it seem like this stuff happened fast? I'm only 42 years old. I'm not ancient. And life was really normal for most of my life. And now there are dudes with penises in women swimming. I don't understand. When, doesn't this seem like it happened instantly? It does until you look back. And I wrote a piece actually in the Epoch Times um, entitled Save the Tomboys, How Decades of Liberal Sexual Ideology is Erasing Women. And so if you trace it back, Um, It's not the first wave feminist movement. Obviously, that was a worthwhile pursuit to allow women to vote, uh, to make sure we weren't defined as property anymore of our husbands. But it was really that third wave feminism that no longer celebrated women for being women and, and our unique capabilities and being mothers and wives and having the ability to go in the workforce. But it really, it, it, Uh, Harvey Mansfield wrote this book called Manliness, and he talks about it it went from this desire to protect women and to stand up for what women can bring to the table to this this desire to like that women can be anything. Right. There are no boundaries for women anymore. We can be anything and even nothing that that our actual thing that makes us feminine is is worth nothing anymore. We can have sex like a man. We can work like a man. Um, so it's this kind of progressive ideology of there are no boundaries, there is no truth. I just heard, saw a, a Twitter post of Catherine Mayer, I think her name is, the new CEO of, of um, NPR, saying something about there are many truths. And I, well, there's not many truths. There is one truth, and then there are personal experiences and personal stories. Um, and I am now probably fulfilling every stereotype of a single woman with my cat in the background. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I knew your, that was going to happen. Cat just, is, <laughs> your cat is. Your you just stay where you are. Your cat is more than welcome to join the broadcast, and if it has anything to add, it is welcome to do so. Uh, you know what? Actually, let me ask you. Your yeah. story, because you're you're kind of a convert to this way of thinking over the last few years. Give us your story. Yeah, I am. Um, I grew up pretty conservative in a uh, in a small town in in kind of blue collar Pennsylvania. Everybody knows it because of the office. I grew up in Scranton. Um, my grandfather was a coal miner, um, and you know my dad was kind of a star football player at Penn State and went into insurance, very typical middle class, maybe upper middle class at that point. Like we'd probably be considered poor at this point, Um, but, uh, and pretty much upper middle class, good public school education. And there was definitely a focus to achieve and to do well. And I um, played varsity tennis. I was a dancer, um, went on to a very conservative school in the South in Virginia. Um, But I think part of me was kind of on this active pursuit of fulfillment. Like I was seeking something and I wasn't finding it in the outside world, but I kept going there for it. Um, And I rebelled a little bit. I, I, you know, if the things that my parents 
were telling me were true, I think I wanted to find those things out for myself. I didn't want to just take anybody's word for it. And so I felt very constrained kind of by this potentially, I guess we want to say conservative. It felt, it felt very binding, right? We talk about boundaries, but this to me at that time felt very binding and do this, go be, I was going to, I was ready to go to law school. That's what I thought I wanted to do. Um, my actual undergrad is in public policy. I worked in DC for a summer and I said, no, thank you. <laughs> um, and then I moved to Alabama, which is also pretty conservative. I moved to Birmingham and then I, you know, was still seeking and I went where everybody goes when they're seeking, which is Los Angeles. Um, and I, you know, if you don't have a, a solid sense of self, if you don't have um, a true understanding of who you are and what you want, you can get very lost there very easily and very pulled into the progressive ideology. And that's what happened. Like I was perfect. I was perfect fodder for the left, right? Someone who was seeking who probably wanted attention. And I talk about this um, in my piece in The Federalist. I think we have a lot of women walking around with daddy issues. Um, you know, I think women want to be adored. They want to be loved. They have this nurturing quality. They have this empathetic quality that can be taken advantage of by the left. So all of those things um, really put me in prime position to be brainwashed for more, um, for the most part. And then, I was out there and in other liberal cities, New York and Austin for about 20 years. I mean, way fast forwarding to um, COVID. And I made a career out of kind of health and wellness. I was an on-camera personality. I got all these degrees. I was deep into the yoga world, deep into spirituality, trips to India, following a guru. I mean, it, it was a cult for sure. Um, the more I even learn about what was going on behind the scenes, the more confident I am in saying that I was in a spiritual cult. Um, and I kind of started coming out of that right before COVID and then COVID hit and something just did not feel right. Like for all I knew about health and nutrition and particularly when we started to see the data and who was dying, um, it just didn't feel right to me. I, I the red flag really went off when people started rushing to the store for toilet paper and I'm like, what? This is just illogical. What the heck is going on? And you're telling me at the time I lived in Topanga Canyon, which is just this beautiful enclave in Los Angeles near Malibu in the mountains. And you're telling me I can't go to the beach. I mean, you saw, I'm sure there were surfers that got pulled out of the water and arrested. And I saw people jumping to the other side of the street with masks on. And that just <laughs> like, red went off. I think all the training I had, you know, what I say is my conservative upbringing probably saved me right so so logic finally started to kick in again um and then i really went down the rabbit hole there was another incident that happened around the george floyd stuff and you know it's a kind of a longer story but it made me see the the hypocrisy of the left really um and it around the whole black lives matter thing and 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 where people were getting their information and, and how biased they were about it. Um, and Candace Owens has a part in that story, you know, so that, that was interesting. And um, I had no idea who she was when I first heard her, but so I, I, you know, we were in lockdowns and I took a lot of hikes around my neighborhood because that's pretty much all I can do. And I was listening to Joe Rogan podcasts and Jordan Peterson podcasts. And then I, I just started to kind of wake up like a lot of people, I think. I think COVID in a way was somewhat of a blessing for people. Um, for a lot of parents, they saw what was happening in schools. Um, for for some people kind of living in this la-la land of rainbows and unicorns out in Los Angeles that everything is not rainbows and unicorns. Um, and then I kind of decided you know, I'm really interested in truth. I think I always have been. I think that's ultimately what led me to seek things. And I just, what I was doing in my career prior didn't feel meaningful enough anymore. And and I know I, I've helped a lot of people. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and 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 compliment me on my work and I've helped them and, and that was great. But I think I had reached the point in my career where I'd done everything I was going to do and there was something going on here that was bigger. And 
I decided to go back to get my master's in public policy at Pepperdine University, which was right up the street from me, which was very convenient. Um, and that program, what we had to read, the books, we had, the great books we had to read, right? It was like a great books program. Um, so Aristotle, uh, a book by Matthew Crawford was really wonderful. And I read, I kind of gobbled his stuff up and reading and listening and having conversations with people. And then I came to realize like, wow, this side of the aisle is a lot more fun, first of all. And I'm back in reality and I can laugh again. And not everything has to be so serious and I don't have to save the world. And along with that, I went back to Christianity. So it was like all of these things, like that that weight, that burden that Jesus took off my shoulders of needing to be the savior of the world, because someone already did that. I mean, it, it was just a massive transformation. And what I wanna emphasize about that is that like, I think right now this goes beyond, what we're seeing now goes beyond kind of Marxist ideology. It goes beyond the woke mind virus. I think there's a deep spiritual sickness and that's in the heart and no amount of logic. This is where I think conservatives sometimes miss the boat. There's no amount of logic that's going to appeal somebody that is to, to change their mind that is spiritually sick. Um, you can have these wake up calls. I think COVID was one of them, but I just think we are ill right now and it's a deep illness and it's beyond, like I said, this mind virus, although that plays a part of it. Yeah. 